the way and manner that Nigerians are going about that their daily activities, forgetting about the unrest that is presently happening in the southeastern part of this country is alarming. I'm Dr. Gideon Issa and I'm a concerned Nigerian. Now, I want to bring to the notice of the president that this country, Nigeria, is divided into its geopolitical zones. And I know that most politicians only remember political zone, uh, geopolitical zones only during campaign and election. But I want to bring to the, to the table of Mr. President that the southeastern part of this country is still part of Nigeria. Backstory, about some month ago or about a year ago, uh, Mazi Unamdi Kalu was um, was arrested, and since then, what was the cause of his arrest? He is part of is the head of the indigenous people of Biafra that are agitating for the Biafra Republic. Why are they agitating? They are agitating for Biafra Republic because they feel that they have been sidelined for too long in this country. When for the past since 1999, I think apart from SSG being given to Ayu Pius Ayim, Ayim Pius Ayim, I don't think a, a very very important position have, give, have been given to an Easterner. Nigeria is treating the South Easterner like a man that is married to three wives, is not giving attention to the third wife, and is not letting the wife to go. Nigeria is like a toxic husband to the side Easterner. Okay, this person, Nigeria is like a country that is with uh, that is married to the West, to the Yoruba, the Igbo and the Yoruba and the and the Igbos. Now the two other wives are receiving attention, which is the Aosa and the Yoruba. The South Eastern, which is the third wife, is not receiving attention. And she's saying, divorce me, let me go. They don't want to divorce her and they don't want to give her attention. And that is the cause of all this agitation that is going on in the South East. Okay, instead of calling the leader of the agitation group to a round table to say, okay, come, what do you think we can do for this country to move forward, for us to stay united? About some years ago, in, in the early 1960s, people like General, people like General uh, Ojuku have tried, uh, Ojuku have tried to get this freedom. And after 60 something years later, we are still here, still talking about this same freedom. And the main reason that they were agitating that time, as we speak, on Mondays in the southeast, they don't open bank. They don't open mall. They don't go about their daily businesses. Why? Because their brother that is agitating for them to have become a republic on their own since the Nigeria government is not including them in the modus operandi of the country is still in detention. And nobody is talking about it. The president gave his inaugural speech on the 5th, on the, on the 29th of May this year. And he didn't say anything about it. I was thinking that yesterday, that is October 1st, he was going to mention the insecurity that is going on in the Southeast. And he didn't say anything about it. If these people are no longer part of this country, they should let them go and they should let us know. Because a particular region cannot be shut down on Monday, that's the first day of the week, and everybody is doing as if they are not aware. Now to Mr. President, my advice is, can you please call a dialogue? Invite Unam Dikalu to the presidency. Sit him down and hear from him. These people are our brothers. And don't forget that they are one part of this country that God has blessed them with the creative power. When you go to the Newi, you will see our brothers from the southeast without a, without a university result. Running businesses that is running into billions. The likes of Shisco, the likes of, the likes of Shikasi, the likes of Innocent. These are people that didn't go to the four walls of the university. But they are employing Harvard graduates and paying them millions every month. This is called creative power. They don't buy that one in the market. God gave it to them. Have you ever imagined calling these people to a round table say, how are you people doing this thing? How are you able to manage a business from scratch till it will run into billions of Naira business and empire without going to the university? How are you able to do this? It is a creative power. Instead of all pretending that we don't know, I want the international community to be aware that the South Easterners, they are, be, they are feeling like an orphan in their own motherland. And I want it to be on record that a day like this came, I, I, I spoke and I lent my voice that Nigeria should give attention to Southeast. They are our brothers. Don't think I'm saying this because of because I'm an Igbo. I'm not an Igbo. My name is Gideon Issa. 
I'm from the north central part of this country, which is Kogi State, Amigala by tribe. But I want everyone to know that we are no longer on that table of ethnicity that will be divided across land. We will never allow politicians to divide us. I want everybody to know. I want the international community to know. I want the United Nations to know. I want World Health Organization to know. I want all government parastatals. I want the president of the U.S. to know that the Indibos have been over sidelined for long. They are part of this country. They are our brothers. That attention must be given to them. That sit at home is dealing with their economy. It must be addressed. It must be addressed. The largest market in West Africa is in, is in uh, uh, Southeast there. And nobody is giving it attention. So if anybody will not give it attention, we will give it attention. That's it at home. It must to end. And there must to be called to dialogue. And Mazin Amdikalu must be given attention. And he must be given his freedom. Because I don't know why he will still be in detention till now. I think he was in detention even before DCP Abakiari that was caught with cocaine. And DCP has been released. And now, Unam Dikalu is still in detention to today. So I'm calling on the president of all well-meaning Nigeria that let proper consideration be made. As I am making this video now, if there is no proper attention given to the Indibos in the next 30 days, I will be on all national TV in Nigeria to hear my voice. I will be on channels arise and all national TV. And until this issue is being given attention, we will not rest. Anywhere you are watching, I would like you to make sure you share this video and let it get to international communities for them to know that the Indibos are calling for attention and they must be given attention because it is their right. Thank you very much. See you on another episode.